On her talk today, we revisit happenings in Agogo with Fulani Hetzman. So the GH Today team on Saturday um, hits the road and routes Agogo Township. Well, they call it the naturally walled town. Yes, they call it the naturally walled town. And for us, it was just to kind of get at first hand the real situation on the ground in our quest to unravel the untold story of the Fulani headsmen in this community. Um, our guests are seated in a bit, we'll be introducing them. Um, but Kafui, I thought th the trip was very eventful. It was. Uh, we kicked off, uh, we set off around about um, 8.30, 8.45, and leisurely drive mm -hmm. through Kapim. Remember, I, 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 at some point I was like, I can't believe we're out of a car and that we're in Ashanti region mm -hmm. already. Yeah, and then, and then we got there around about noon. Uh-huh. We went and spoke with opinion leaders. Exactly. We spoke with people on the ground, really, physically, yep. literally. I mean, people going to their farms. Indigents. You know, I, 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 the way we people going to their farms, well, we, we, most of the people that we spoke with mm -hmm. talk about how that now they are unable to, you know, go mm -hmm. to the farms mm -hmm. because of activities of, you know, the, um, the, the, the Fulani heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and I, yeah, I remember now, I think we met those guys with the cans that were actually returning from their farms, though, but, but we're talking about the decimation of some of the farms, and, and indeed we saw most of them. Mm -hmm. um, most of them had been burnt down, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, you remember one guy explained to us reasons behind the burning. I, I didn't know until Saturday that if you burn, it grows quickly. Yeah, and the, 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 and the grass regenerates exactly. very quickly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yes, uh, we, we, oh my goodness, and the situation of the women. So, you remember how they say it? Yes. Let's keep it right. And so, you don't know what they mean by obedidi. Mm -hmm. And definitely when you hear you, you, you're scared. So yeah. let me go with Ubedidi. Yeah, and indeed. then it turns out to be something else. Exactly. And we drove in, into, into the next constituency. We left uh, Agogo and ended the up Kweu, in the Kuo area. Kweu area and, yeah. and the action seems to have also spread over there. No, it, it, all the way. Mm. I don't know if you remember. You mm. know, those guys that we saw from the Kweu area mm -hmm. heading towards Agogo. I'm mm -hmm. um, talking about how that, because they, we, they were unable to engage in their farming activities, they were moving closer to find a place where they could. Because that is their livelihood. That's yes. a big of, of, of yeah. the community yeah. and um, for them they don't have it anymore and and they kind of all attributed it to activities of Fulani headsmen in the community um, um, as, as we go into the conversation I believe that we can now begin to talk about the two different groups of Fulanis I didn't know until mm -hmm. we got there mm -hmm. on Saturday mm -hmm. so some of the indigents talk about um, how that they are the Ifie ones mm -hmm. And the Irimo ones, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. As to what that means, we'll, we'll have all of that on. Yes, it's a, so 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 by if you there are those that were uh, born and bred, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. in Ghana. Yes, yeah. in Agogo. Mm -hmm. So automatically they become citizens of of Agogo, okay. and indeed Ghanaians mm -hmm. by birth, mm -hmm. uh, as per our constitution. Mm -hmm. And those um, that uh, were told just come, they, they don't even know. According to they don't even know where they come from. But before you know it. They are there, and they seem to be the ones that are causing, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the trouble. So, um, yeah, l l l I'm sure that as we, as we begin the conversation, a, a lot of things are going to be coming up, and then we, we, we will kind of dissect the whole issue and find out if indeed, when, when we spoke to the Kuntahini as well, he made mention of the fact that, look, all the news that is being peddled around is false. He actually showed us documents. Right. Yes. And I'm sure uh, the, 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 exactly. we'll give you a sense of exactly. that. Exactly. This is just like a, yes. a brief, yes. you know, yeah. kind of tear, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. teaser, mm -hmm. you know, into the conversation. Okay. I, I must say, it was, you know what scared me at a point um, when we were told by one young man that, hey, if you guys go towards there, they'll just start shooting at your car. <laughs> That was when I knew I was in a war-torn area. Yeah, oh I, my goodness. I, I tapped my chest and said, ah, bulletproof, are you And then I started thinking about my children. Okay, I'm a mother of two guys. Do we really have to go? Yeah. <laughs> but we came back safely, as you can see. Yeah. And we're here on Hard Talk, looking at the untold story of the Fulani people. Biswe, I think you want to introduce our guests. Okay, let, yes. me, let me quickly. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Professor Barry, we mm -hmm. all know him. Yes, yeah. Um, Prof. Barry, he is the president of um, the Fulani Association of Ghana. Okay. Prof, you're Prof, welcome. Thank I was you. asking you a question early on. Can I ask again? <laughs> yes. Why? <laughs> I, I, I was asking Prof early on if you need, I was looking beautiful enough to, to, to pass as a Fulani woman. 
In fact, when I saw you first, uh -huh. I, I believe that you're a flat woman. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm very Kenyan. <laughs> very fancy. <laughs> okay, so, um, yes, uh, Prof is uh, our, our guest, one of our guests. And uh, we also have Mr. Eric Amwakuchum, member of the NPP communications team. We'll be joined later on by a lawyer, mm -hmm. so we can pick up the legal sides to our conversation. So, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Alaikum. Alaikum. Very good. Very good. Are you or are you pretending to be? No, I, I know some Arabic. <laughs> I know some Arabic. It's not Arabic. Yes, that's uh, good. I, I know uh, non-Muslims can also speak Arabic. Oh, well, no, no, no. At all. Arabic is a language. You can speak so, Russian. Wh 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 when I say Jawali. Oh, good. My friend. <laughs> you have taken me by surprise. Yes. Okay. Hey, I want, I want to let you know that I was in Aobo. Exactly. And I met some Fulani. Fine. Fine, Young men fine, who fine. kind of, you know, taught us a few yeah, words here and there. So, so Jawali means what? Jawali means good morning. Yes, and and what's the response? Jemtem. Jemtem. Or okay. Wali Jem. Or Wali Jem. We can say Wali Jem. Wali Jem. All right. So good. We're going to kick off with you <laughs> first. <laughs> what do you make of all that's been going on in the past two weeks? <laughs> and Fulanis are now center stage in the conversation in Ghana. Not just about what's happening there, but it's, it's also become almost a, a security issue in Ghana. Last week, I'll give you an example. Last week, mm. uh, the EIB network assembled a group of experts at Alisa on Thursday. So we had Dr. Enin from the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center. Mm. We also had the Deputy Minister for Interior, James mm. Agalga, mm. and also Major General Retired Coleman, who represents a, a civic forum. And we're talking about threats to Ghana security. Mm. And Dr. Enin made the point that the Fulani issue is not just... A conflict between settlers and uh, migrants, but it, it is potentially a national security issue. What do you make of the conversations that are going on um, concerning the Fulanis, not just in Agogo, but in all, all parts of, of Ghana where they are? Well, uh, generally, like I said, in some other stations, both TV and radio, well, this is a very alarming issue. Because the issue of Fulanis in this country has been on and off, but this time now around, it's taking a very you know, alarming proportion, which actually calls for our attention and concern, uh, because it involves lives and properties. Peoples have been dislodged in their places of residence. They've been there for so many years. Their hearts have been burnt. And some farmers also have suffered, have been victimized here and there. And also some cattle has also have been killed, and some herdsmen also have lost their life in the process. And you can see, you know, hundreds of cattle have now cutted, scattered in the whole area, running in, in disarray. So, of course, it has to do with the security issue, because the uh, security issue takes care of uh, people's life and, and their property, and their safety where they ever they, they found themselves to be. Therefore, it's a matter of concern which we have to give a very serious thought about. Uh, Eric, let me come to you. What, what information did, um, let me generalize it as in political parties, and I know you represent the MPP though, what did you pick up before you started in speaking to the issue of the Fulanese in Argo? Well, first of all, I'd say um, good morning to good morning. all the viewers and then to yourselves Thank and you. then to Prof. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Um, Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that, um, like Prof alluded to, we've been here before, um, where we've had issues where in different communities there have been some sort of tension between the, the Fulani headsman and then the local community. Uh, to the point that even I think that with the Agogo issue it was actually taken all the way to the Supreme Court. And as far as I'm concerned, there seems to be some kind of Supreme Court judgment on that particular issue, which the people in Agogo are saying that it hasn't actually been executed. And that's probably why these things have come to this particular, um, I mean, proportions. Now, I mean, I look at it from a totally different perspective. I know that it's also very important for people to start talking about security and all that. But then I asked myself, I mean, coming here, I actually drove in my car. Mm -hmm. Now, 100 years ago, if you were coming here, you'd probably be trekking. It would take you maybe 12 hours or so to walk from, let's say, East Lagos to get to this place. Now, what in 
what is so difficult for us as a people to even move to modernizing <coughs> the way we even farm in terms of animal husbandry? Why is it so difficult for us to change? Because if you go around the country, you realize the country is actually becoming predominantly urban to the point where it will be unsustainable going forward to even try to farm cattle in the manner that we've been farming cattle 200, 400, 500 years ago. That, that's my personal perspective. So in as much as we're looking at the security aspect of it, I was expecting that as we speak, we speak, the Ministry of Agriculture, especially, and then the government would have come out that in the next 10 to 15 years, we are putting down a policy, policy initiative to make sure that we modernize animal husbandry, especially when it comes to cattle. We are talking about milk, we are talking about the production of uh, leather, the meat itself, and all the other complementary uh, products that you can actually get from this particular aspect of uh, farming. So that's where I look at it from. Of course, when it gets to these issues, there's always a tendency for people to play on the emotions and the fears mm -hmm. of people. So, I mean, I hear that people are being xenophobic and all sort of things. For me, I think that there's a, a bit of an overreaction. <coughs> The real issues on the ground has to be dealt with. Whilst we're dealing with the, I mean, imminent issues, the problems on the ground today, we need to get to a point where in the next 15 years, we will not be talking about cattle running routes, I mean, in this country, we're in 2016, for God's sake. So for me, that is where I'm looking at it from that perspective. We have this Fulani herdsman who in the last two, 300 years, probably even longer, know how to rear these cattle. Why don't we have a system, a proper program in place to make sure that we even enhance their knowledge on new methods of production? So for you, that's Use the system that's For me, that's, the system that's, that's, yes, because if my great-grandmother or grandfather should come from their grave today, and they would absolutely not see any difference between how they lived before and how we're living today. For me, honestly speaking, that's where I look at it. When it comes to the politics of it, as to people trying to take advantage of the fact that uh, it's an election year and all that. I mean, we all do that. I mean, I'll hold my hands up and say we all do that, trying to play to the fears and uh, emotions of people. But the truth of the matter is that as a people, as a country, we need to be serious about how we develop. We'll and get that to is, you. And we'll that, for me, is the most important, important aspect thing. of it, so okay. that we have a proper policy direction okay. towards making sure that we modernize our culture. And then you can look at it from all the various aspects of agriculture that we have. Right. If we are serious as a people. To okay. To uh, we'll get to you on the political dimension pretty soon because sure. there were some comments that uh, Mr. Nidoho made um, and I'd like to hear your sure. response yeah. on that. But Prof. Barry, yeah. first of all, you say you are president of Fulanese in Ghana. Yeah. Does your jurisdiction cover the Fulanese who come in and go out? Do they recognize you as their president? Well, uh, if it comes to their knowledge that we have an association under this name, and then they also, when they come, they, you know, uh, mingle with the locals. And sometimes you find it very difficult to distinguish who just recently uh, came and who were there here already. But Pro definitely but for uh, sure. According to the locals, yes. they are not even ready to talk to them, if you remember, Kafri. That sometimes even when they greet them, they try to say hi, they don't even respond. They don't even look their direction. Uh, you mean the locals? You're the talking locals, about the, the local Fulani who Fulani. are resident there. Yes. And then say the new that, ones when they come, mm -hmm. yes. they feel reluctant even to talk to yes. them. Yes. Well, it, yes. it could be we, possible. We have them on but, but, but what I assume that, well, uh, these people who are just, you know, coming in must have the notion and understanding that they are guests to the host. But have you spoken they, to they, any of their representatives? Have you interacted with any of these you know, it's who are very not based here for but now, those who is it this now this thing is now coming out mm. that we have problem of you know trying to distinguish between the two groups those who are recently uh, who are coming in and or have he recently been in, in, in the country uh, but i think if there is any bone of contention between the grazing areas this is where you may have the clashes between the <coughs> residents of the Fulanese who are resident and those who are incoming newly so uh, of course 
I, I expect always that, well, if there is a, a, a sort of a, you know, regulating the activities of the husbandry issue and the livestock activities in the country with the policies, that's our brother. Is just it realistic? Mentioned. Because he's talking about modernization of, well, of modern husbandry. Just let me just yeah. come through animal husbandry, which sounds great. Mm. But the majority of the cattle that is being reared is, I believe, coming in from those who come and go. How do you regulate their movements? They, they are not no, here no, for a you, long time. You, you, you have to, 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 to do it. It is not a difficult thing to do because these people... So why haven't we definitely, done it? Definitely, well, because you have not actually given serious thought to, uh, to the whole really? issue. Oh, yes, we have not done We have not done this. Last year, I was with, with the Minister of Interior in his office. We have a very long chat, wrong conversation. I summoned all the, lead, the, the leadership of the flying herdsmen in the country. We met there and we talked. And we made some proposals to him. That way, now we want us to look at it where we can control the movement of these people. How? Herdsmen. How? Now, how? By trying to uh, go into the zoning system. Now, we have some zoning system in the north, upper west, upper uh, east, and then also in the Ashanti region with the, with, the eastern, with, with, with the eastern region, here, western region, central, and the south. So now, if you have this zoning system, each time that we are receiving incoming, you know, stocks of this uh, Fulani herdsmen, we know where to direct them. You know, if you are coming from the east, we know that you are coming from the east, then you give you a, a, a direction that, okay, now we are giving a tag, we are giving you a number, we are giving a, a, you know, a, a, a sort of a roadmap where you can take your tackle cattle to. It will not be a difficulty if really we come to give a serious thought about it and we want to get this problem solved once and for all and I get a lasting solution to this crisis that has been coming on and off almost every year. It's very unfortunate. We are not behaving, in fact, as a, as a matter of fact, as people who are mindful of the development of this country the way we're expected to do it in the modern time. In 21st century, and you allow cattle to move without any control, no monitoring, no surveillance, no anything. They just come in, no direction, and no, they just come and then go. They don't even sometimes, they don't even pay anything. To the, to, the, to, the, to the benefit of the country. So why can't you regulate this thing now and try to have a policy, especially when we take into consideration that we have some certain guidelines that we have to be you know, proactive towards to. Something like, like this protocol of the you know, ECOWAS, free movement of goods and, 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 and persons and people and what have you. These are all guidelines. When we go into them now, we have to get some joint committees with our neighboring countries. Those joint committees will be it is permanent in nature so that we always address these issues which are of common concern and we try to regulate the movement of these uh, catalysts and, 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 and their people. So why can't we this seem to get a solution to the problem? Why is it the we, problem? We, some of the locals that we spoke to, in fact, we went to some of their farms. Yes. Um, so um, we had um, one of them that had a sizable number of, you know, the cattle and they had confined them to a particular place where they would bring them in, uh, I mean, out at a certain time to get them to graze mm. and then take them in, you know. So you can see there's that bit of regulation. Even with water, um, um, th there is a little lake that they told us that they take the cattle to. Um, it's not the same one that the um, community kind of, you know, drinks from. Mm. So um, I'm saying that with the local Fulanese, they are kind of, you know, following through with all of these you know regulations and processes mm. so what and, and again you know that the flan issue is not limited to uh, the ashanti region alone at all now it is kind of widespread mm. what is what is the uh, what are you doing mm. you know to ensure that your, your reputation does not degenerate like on daily basis mm. speaking to those locals you could tell that they had good intentions no, they, they, they feel a part of their community, but then even they feel frustrated by activities of these other ones that come in every now and then. Well, um, I actually, I would have liked, if you have this information, I would have liked that you invited one of the locals, resident of, you know, cattle readers there, so that to be part of this. We, we have discussion. them on video. We very good, very good, so very good, very good. Them. On what I'm on saying, video. even those people you are talking about now, yes. yesterday I spoke with Mr. Gurza, and he spoke to me. We talked. We Alaji, Alaji, Alaji Guruza. Guruza. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Alaji Guruza. Alaji Guruza. We spoke yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he bitterly complained that even some of his cattle had been killed. He said it. 
And he, I asked him, if he, okay, if that be the situation, please try to come to Accra. The place is very, ten, you know, the tension is so high there. I don't like to go there at this particular time. So that if you are able to come to Accra, then we put our minds together and see the way out. But that's so, a quick question. Why is Al Haji Grunza important to this discussion on Fulani, mm -hmm. and Agogo? Yeah. Why? Why? Is why? Because he's also in, I mean, has a lot of uh, heads. He's also he's, a, he's considered to be a headman. He has a lot of cattle there, and he's riding them. So he's going through the same experience as some other people who have been fulfilled that have been victimized. And Alaji Goza is, is the owner of the King Faisal football team? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's been. Mm -hmm. And he's a, he's a Ghanaian, and he's a religious, and <coughs> he's also is in the practice of, you know, <coughs> this husbandry for quite a long time. He's complaining to me bitterly. And even he said yesterday, only yesterday, two boys were killed. One 19 and the other one 70 year. Now, the father of these two boys is called uh, uh, Manju, Alaj Manju. And he said, well, we are sitting together. And these boys now have done, done nothing. And then he, they, 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 he said, well, some people came to the area. They chased the boy. The boy was running, and they started shooting. Which area is this? In, in Agogo, no, in, no. in the bush, yeah. When were these boys supposed to have been yesterday, killed? Yesterday. Even, even the cop, even the dead body now is in the Agogo hospital. They have not collected them. And the head is so smashed with the stones and everything. And you so use, that's the full ending. Two boys killed. Definitely, were killed. definitely so, we are losing lives. And, no, and I think that it is worrying the, the level where we have come to. Let me come to you, Eric. Well, Look, I, I mean, so walking around Agogo, I mean, you find even indigents, some indigents carrying guns. Well, I mean, it's definitely. And that's a very worrying It's definitely trend. a national security issue. Uh, the issue of our people even bearing arms in itself, it's quite alarming. Now, I mean, Prof was saying that, I mean, Alaji Gruza was actually complaining that his cattle has actually been killed. That's, I mean, of course, unfortunate, but people are losing, losing their lives. lives. You understand? And for me, I feel that we get to a point where instead of being proactive on these things, because some of these things has happened, and there's a precedent to this whereby it's actually gone all the way to the Supreme Courts, right? What it means is that the people in Agogo, for one reason or the other, have become uncomfortable with the operations of these headsmen. Let's assume that they are the ones that actually come <coughs> from abroad, not the local ones, right? And like I said, this happened in 2012, and we find ourselves in 2016, and the issue has actually cropped up again, whereby at this point, people are losing their lives. Now, guess what? They are moving the cattle through from uh, Agogo now heading towards Fantiaqua area, heading towards the Kwewu area. Yeah. And now these people who are resident in those areas have become alarmed as well. So in those, even as they get there, the tension is actually on a very high level. So as I said, we need to find the immediate solutions to this one. But for us not to come back to this stage, there has to be some kind of policy initiative like uh, Prof said. I mean, you can zone, it, it's, this is not rocket science. It's not rocket science. It's just that we've been very lazy as a people, and even the policy makers have been extremely lazy trying to sort of make it business as usual. And that's why we find ourselves where we find ourselves today. Now, coming back to, um, I think you wanted me to comment on Kokonido and stuff. Right? Yes, he, and his comments, for those of you who didn't hear, was that, look, this thing is becoming a political issue, mm -hmm. that uh, Fulanis vote a particular way, mm -hmm. and uh, politicians will take advantage of this, and they want them moved out because it will affect voting. We put the question to the Kuntihini of the area. He said it is not a political issue, it's a criminal issue. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this, Listen, uh, as uh, you represent the MPP's yeah, communication? To be honest with you, I mean, I don't take Kokonido who's serious, honestly. But, I mean, for the fact that he actually alluded to the fact that they vote a certain direction, as far as I'm concerned, and what is actually available to me, they vote a certain direction. It's not towards the direction of the NDC. I mean, he's playing politics with it. But, listen, Koku Anidohu, right, tries to allude to the fact that people are <coughs> making these things because they want to drive the full enhancement out of this country, right? Now, they have the benefit of the state security apparatus. They are in government, right? Now, if you find that anybody, regardless of who that individual is, that's something that is in detriment to the Constitution, which is supposed to govern all of us, you, by, by all means, you have the right to go and make sure that that person is brought to order. Mm. Now, for you to stand on a platform 
and make those statements. For me, it's irresponsible. Because what he has done is actually, I mean, let's assume that it's true. What he has done is actually, I mean, reinforced that particular perception and then also escalated the tension. So what exactly, what was his contribution? What was his um, remedy to the situation? Nothing. So if you go around, I mean, arresting members of parliament and stuff like that, does it mean that you're actually going to go to Agogo, for instance, and arrest everybody who is actually uncomfortable with the operations of people they think that are destroying their farmlands and are raping their women? Is that what the government is actually interested in to win an election? Because from where, from where you look at it, their, their preoccupation is about elections. Now, you vote a government into power to execute plans, policies, and programs to make people comfortable, not to come in the first day and think about the next election. And for me, I, I mean, of course, I've stopped taking, if it wasn't a particular issue to do with the full and knee and the national security issue, I'd never comment on issues coming from, emanating from Kwekwani Dobo, because as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't say anything that would, I mean, it's of merit that would actually, I mean, get us to come and sit here on this platform to discuss it. Prof, you were trying to make a Yeah, point. actually, I'm trying to throw some light on, on, on actually the comment of our, our brother here. He's making a reference to a, a court judgment obtained in, 19, in 2012. But then, you see, we are having the tradition of treating issues in a very haphazard way and ad hocly. That is why we don't reach at the root causes of the problem and we face the crisis the way we're supposed to do. Now, he's talking about this uh, judgment obtained in 2012, earlier on. Now, the judgment that was obtained from the court, that to me, that judgment, it doesn't look in, in a very... Uh, anyway, let me go to, to straight to the point. Now, you are giving a judgment for the uh, you know, ejection of people, a evacuation of people at one particular settlement in the blanket manner. You did not distinguish who has been there before or who was there earlier or who has been there in a very a short period. And then again, forgetting that, those people who were there were there... On, 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 in the, on the legal uh, uh, premises that they have obtained certain permission from the indigenous. They have entered in the tenancy agreement with the people for 50 years. And now you are given a judgment from a high court that these people have to be evacuated completely from the place without making any reference to this tenancy agreement which is holding at that particular time. Is it a fair thing? Definitely you are provoking a situation where it will take us to no place where we can even have a piece of our mind. Somebody will have taken money from him. You've entered in tenancy agreement with him, and the, the, the period is holding. You are not even halfway of the period stipulated in this thing. And then you have some areas demarcated in, in, in the tenancy agreement and everything. The here and there, there are encroachment front and back, left and right and everything. You, as a judge, you are sitting in a court. This thing has brought to you. You have not even have the, the courage or even thinking of inviting the other party to hear their side of the story, you go and give a statement or judgment that these people have to be ejected from the place. Is it a fair thing? Please. So, so for Let you, you think, there's, 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 a, there's, a, you think no, there's, there's some wrong, wrongdoing there, but we'll get to those issues. We'll, we'll no, get to those issues pretty soon. Uh, exactly. Barry. No, so, that's so the, that. I'm just reacting. I understand. To, yeah. Mr. Chung, we'll also get your okay. feedback. I'll even ask you about the comments that the MPP MP for the area made about uh, people not attacking the Fulani people, but actually killing their cattle. And whether that is an incitement or not, or whether uh, he needs to be brought to book. But in case you joined us, we're looking at the untold story of the Fulani um, uh, people and the herdsmen. And in, light with, in line with this, this when I decided on Friday after our show to take a trip to Agogo yep. and go and speak to the people on the ground mm -hmm. and find out exactly what the issues are. So... Take a look, and we return to speak with our guest, Prof. Barry. He represents Fulanese in Ghana, and Mr. Eric Amwakuchum, who is from the MPP communication team. This is GH Today on GH1 TV. So you've heard all that has been said by the experts about the Fulanese and their conflict with the people of Agogo. We decided to find out exactly what the real issues are. So we came to the town 
come with us and let's find out exactly what the real deal is. Tell me, are you satisfied so far with how far we have come in settling the issue with the Fulanese? Yes. Because you can't take the Lord into our own hands. Immediately, the government sent the dignities to come and settle. We appreciate they welcome them. So they can't help, help us to drive them all away from the full headsmen from our two land so that our farmers will get opportunity to do their farm. It's right now, their farming season. So that we appreciate and welcome them. We, we do everything to them so that they will come and help us to drive them away. The fluent headsmen from our land. God declared that they have to live our from our land. But since then, uh, 2012, up to date, they are still having given so many troubles. So immediately, say, four day, three days today, when they came, and we are very, very agreed with them. We are, we are proud to give the point of hands to the government, simply because recently, 20. 2016, right, right now, it's our lesson period. One piece. If you don't know peace, they have killed our people. 27 people. What, 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 what are we going to do? We are a man. You have to fight with them. No. You have to have put the hand into our own hands. Uh, the only thing they are going to do is that anybody, even the whole Ghana, who will be sentenced, he must have his picture. Sentenced to either four or ten years, I mean, the foreigners, to true. They have to put them on the computer. A time will come, assessment, they will go and find out if they are sitting in the prison. They, it's a mere trick. Many of them will send them to the uh, sentence. They will have to send them to jail. But immediately, you could find out. Nobody. So I want the government. Everybody must be the computer. For six months time, we have to find out if the man is still in prison or hot. There were gunshots behind the park, and the teachers ran away to Agogo without teaching the school children. As for the headmaster, he was chased out of his farm. He is a wanted man and can't even show up at the school to work. My farm of about seven acres was destroyed in a day. I virtually ran away and left my tools behind. The Fulanis are destroying our farms. We told them we were going to demonstrate in Agogo and upon our return, we erected these barriers. The police ordered us to demolish them, but we told them the only time we will get to get rid of these barriers is when we fight the Fulanis out of this community, else there will be no peace. I was going to my tomato farm and a Fulani told me I'm working in vain for the cattle. I asked him if he gives me a share of the cattle after selling them. It ended up in a confrontation. They have destroyed all my maize and plantain. My child has been sacked from school for non-payment of fees. The headsmen don't follow the cattle themselves. See how we've built a cage for our animals. We are always here. The animals belong to my brother and I. Most of them send kids to shepherd the cattle, and these kids can't prevent the animals from entering people's farm, and the kids often come along with weapons. At my age, even if I attempt talking to them, they ignore you. If you meet them and even greet them, they will not respond. Even if we speak our native language, they won't mind you. If they refuse to respond to our greetings, how can we tell what else they are planning? I was born at Nyemsu nearly 41 years ago. My name is Musa Amadu. This is where I come from. They must go back to where they came from. Honestly, we haven't seen any rape here. They are in the bush, so that's where they do all those things. So yeah, that, that was uh, our, a story of our, our trip to the Agogo area. If you are just joining, joined us, you're watching Hard Talk on GH Today, GH1 TV. We're looking at the untold story of the Fulani. 
we decided to go visit, Biesha and I visit the Agogo area to find out exactly what the issues are on the ground. We spoke to a wide range of people, and that was a video you saw. You'll get that video on YouTube later on after the show is over. But here with us, we have uh, Erika Mwakuchum, who is from the MPP's communication team, and Prof. Barry, who is the president of the Fulanese in, in Ghana. So, Prof. This is what we gathered when we went over there. Exactly. The last gentleman you, you, you heard from is somebody who is actually born here. He's Fulani, but born here. His mother is from, from the town. Exactly. His father was from. Parents um, born there. Yeah, well. and so, so they are worried about what is happening there because they say that when they come into town, the relations with them, between them and the people of Agogo have now become strained because they say, oh, those are the Fulani people going. There's no distinction between those who live in the area and those who come okay, and go. Yeah. Definitely a worrying trend for them. Well, it's a very uh, alarming situation, you know, like I said, but all this goes with uh, regulating the, the movement and activities mm -hmm. of the livestock in the mm -hmm. area. Let us mm -hmm. call a spade a spade. If you see some shortcomings in our, our you know, uh, administration, why can't we try to come, you know, to the realities of life and try to give a serious thought to, to, to the crisis, and now set a committee. The committee will make some recommendations. You know, like you, you, you travel to the area, now you're going to the see the field, you know, the, the activities and the reality on the field. Fine, it's fine. But then you've been going, you, 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 you went there representing your own station, TV station, a media house, and, and this is a part of it. That's fine. But we want us to go beyond that. Let us the, get the security in coming. The, gov the you know, Minister of Agriculture and Minister of Interior and what have you, let be part and parcel of all the operations that we are now going to embark upon in order to achieve a lasting peace. Like I'm saying, if there's always information which is not properly collected or not fully provided, you say we cannot act in a way that it will help us mm. to get a solution to the root, I mean, to the root cause of all these problems that we are facing. Let us, we are not very sincere to, um, in the approach that we are making. So let, now this, I like, listen to the, uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, the, the, the chief there was, was speaking. That's a good thing. So now, if somebody like this now is there, and then we have some other people who will join him in a very, in a platform that we have to give and take. All right. And then we can get Then we can move forward, because the solutions that we want, I'll get to you shortly, Eric, uh, but we do have the MP for the Asante Akim Central constituency, Kwame and you may do entry. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, it's, uh, thank you for joining us on Hard Talk on GH1 TV. What is, this, what is the situation right now with this conflict that has been brewing between the citizens of um, Agogo? The line is very faint. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, what's the situation right now as we speak today? Well, the, I would say that the situation, the actual there is so tense. Um, and there hasn't been any improvement except that the people have now gotten the hope after the visit of the uh, security command. <coughs> and uh, we are hoping that within um, a week or two, there should be some changes. Uh, Honorable, if you're close to your television set, could you kindly lower it for us? We're getting some feedback. So, um, uh, let, let me move. Done. Yes. I'm coming from your place. I'm alone here. Okay. Uh, right. So, we, we, we were in our goal the weekend. We spoke with Krunti Hini. He said that they are satisfied with how far um, the, the, the situation has been worked on. Um, looking at government's, yes. yeah, government's inputs um, of bringing in the security personnel and all that. And indeed, we drove through um, the whole of Agogo and actually entered into Quo. And, and we didn't spot a single, you know, uh, cattle from the, the other group that we're told come in and out. Are you satisfied from where you sit? Are you saying you drove through the principal streets of Angola? Is it? We went, we went all the way through Nyemeso and, and all the towns. Majida. Yes, Majida. And, went, and actually crossed the bridge into Kwe. We didn't spot a single one of them. They are there. We know where they are now. They have now moved up to the Pataman area. 
in between the Mankara and Pataban area. Some time ago, when the security agencies agreed with them that they had gotten some kind of land, and it was very far, they went in circles and then uh, came to a very close place to Agogo. But they are still there. Like, uh, these people live in the, uh, in the wild. They normally put up tents and whatnot. So even if they get a glimpse that some people are coming, and especially around this time, they, they have the information that even the traditional councils are actually uh, said that they cannot live with them again because they are nuisance. So uh, obviously, they would not be conspicuous as you expect. But if you are going with some of the Avogo citizens into this area, you would obviously spot some. Well, I mean, the areas that you mentioned, that's where we were really, because uh, like I said, we drove through like the, the, the whole Did area. But yes, 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 we passed yes. by the through to um, Majida yeah, and all of that. But you go what? through the main road, mm -hmm. you see? Of course. You go through the main road, but they live in the world. So, and then I will go place in a uh, semicircle, I would say. And that area, you would move from one end, join Agogo, and then go to the Pataban area. So you, you move from Pataban and go to Mankara area. But you will not go through the bushes where they are. That's the, okay. that's the problem. Okay. They are still there. I can confidently tell you that. But, but at, at least what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get from you is the fact that, yes, now the security agencies are on the ground. Um, is that definitely making an impact? Uh, to the best of my information, the security agencies have visited Agogo and they are aware of the problem. But as to giving an order or flattening the, the Fulani head out, I haven't gotten the information yet. And that order must come or give them notice that you are being flushed out. Move out of Agogo land. And if they do so, then uh, I'll give them notice, then we'll be comfortable that the people will be going. because. If they have the notice that they are not going to live with the people or live on the land, obviously they will go. And if they start flushing them out, and I, like I said earlier on, it's very easy flushing them out. All you have to do is to probably attack the cattle. I mean, kill some of them, and obviously they will move out. Oh, no, but yes, what you are saying ties in with our experience because we spoke to uh, some ladies coming from the, the farm and they said, yes, because of the presence of the security, the uh, headsmen and their cattle had moved <coughs> further infield and so we were not able to see them uh, uh, easily. But I'm listening to you, the language you are using, you are talking about flashing out. Do you think you and your colleague who asked for the cattle to be to be attacked and not just the pe and not the people you think you are, you are, are you are you contributing to the conversation for a, 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 a solution that is lasting beyond just flashing people out i was not privy to the conversation earlier on earlier on on this your medium i have said that they should not attack the people and they should attack cattle. But isn't that, isn't that a provocation? Why, why, why do you want people to attack uh, cattle? I do not know what we call provocation here. Whether it is destroying water bodies, whether it is causing bushfires, whether <coughs> it is raping women, whether it is cutting the truth of innocent citizens, whether it is shooting innocent citizens, which would be called provocation here. I do not know. Would you so, would, whether these ones are not enough provocation, but attacking a cattle, uh, uh, attacking cattle or a cow would be provocation. That one I am yet or would leave that to listeners to judge. Do you seriously think that if if you were a herdsman and your cattle were attacked, you just smile and say congratulations? Don't you think you, you would attack back? Well, that's what I'm saying. That the security men, that's what they have to do, not the individual. That the <laughs> citizens have been patient enough from day one till now. And they have waited for the security agencies to be on the ground. So if they are on the ground, they have to, what I'm saying is that my advice, if they will listen to me at all, is to tell them to move on their own. And if they are recalcitrant, 
then they have to assault their castle <coughs> and they will leave. Have you because engaged the security officers yourself? The castle, the, sorry? Ha have you engaged the secu security officers? Have you told them this no. that you share with us now? No, I haven't. But when I took the matter to court, I, everybody was aware. When the judgment was given, we said the police, we said the regional commander, I said that we know the lawyer's called entry of judgment. I did entry of judgment, they gave them notice. So all of them are aware. And then subsequently, they said the regional security command said that they were, were holding meetings and then looking at how best they would enforce the, the judgment. And that has taken us uh, about four years now. And okay. Honorable, can I? When they started um, Honorable, um, are you still on the line for us? Yes. Good. Um, Thank you. So we're wrapping up um, quickly. How exactly do you want this problem resolved? Sorry? How do you want it resolved? Way forward. The way forward is to enforce the judgment of the courts. All the Fulani headsmen, the nomadic Fulani headsmen, and the Akato must be flushed out from Adobola. That is about it all. Okay. Thank you. Right, um, so that, that was um, Honorable um, Anime Duenchi, MP for Santiago Central. You heard him. We heard him. And I think that kind of resonates with everybody that we spoke with <coughs> on the ground. Exactly, yes. exactly. So, Prof. Barry, what do you make of the comments of the... the well, uh, I heard him, and uh, to me, he's very unfortunate, a responsible office holder now, looking at it from this one angle. You, there is a, a court judgment we are making <coughs> reference to. That the court judgment also, in fact, uh, set aside a, a lease tenancy agreement with the people for 50 years. These people have paid money and they've got lease agreement for 50 years to be there grazing their cattle and everything. When a judge is given a judgment of that nature concerning those two parties, what do you think, and, and I'm a layman, I'm not a legal uh, a practitioner or legal aspect, but I look at it from the human justice, I mean, sense of justice. We want to deal with this thing now and have somebody, like we are saying, we should stop inflammatory statement and then, you know, provocative uh, approach and inciting people to take laws into their hands. Exactly. What you say people should go and attack cattle, what do you mean exactly? Are they going to attack them with sticks? Or with the, with, the, with the guns. But then, Prof. Barry, when you also have reports, and we spoke to no, the yeah, farmers... You're, just, you're asking yes, me yeah. on react on this I know, comment. Because they're also reacting to provocation. Fine, let, let me learn. If mm -hmm. you do this thing now, it means now, I have a, a, an information that three vehicles went to operation in those areas. Two security vehicles and one care, care, care this thing, uh, 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 what you call, uh, care vehicle, that's uh, a pickup. Now, each time those uh, cattle were killed, the care, care were around... And then those cows were taken into that KK in their numbers. What is, what is a KK? I mean, that, uh, that, uh, uh, what, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the tricycles? The traffic. No, not the traffic. The, the vehicles. Okay, all right. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're transporting these mm -hmm. things now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, pickups. Mm -hmm. Now, these pickups, they go with them. Each time they kill the cattle, they were carried out in that pickup, and the pickup will, will be sent into the town. It's a bit than it meat. Go and sell them. Are you calling this thing, please? Are we in the 21st century? But not in the Gangaru law. We are dealing with people who are civilized. People's rights are protected. Human dignity is protected. No life is valued than any other life. We are all human beings. So if there's anything of this nature, let us look for a proper solution which will be sort of a, you know, satisfactory to all the parties concerned, the stakeholders. So we call that one a lasting peace. Not this type of hard 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 approach. Eric, the, the situation as is unfolding, I see it as two things. Look, people go into agreement and it's bound usually by law. So what the people of Algo are saying is that, look, we're saying that just put them in the ranch. You know, put them in, the, in, in, in a, a confined area where we know that they are here. Mm -hmm. They don't just come out into people's farms because farming is the livelihood of the people of Algo. And so now they're thinking that you are not living up to your side of the agreement. And so if that is the case, then go back where you're coming from. Well, I, I think that um, my reference to the Supreme Court, the verdict, um, it's not necessarily to sort of um, 
say that the court was right or wrong. But there's an antecedent to the reason why the case was taken to court in the first place. And the reason was simple, that the original agreement was breached and that the headsmen were not going according to what was actually supposed to have been put in down in the contract. That's the antecedent, right? So that's the reason why it went to court. Now, my point is that after the court's verdict, it's taken us four years to even think about how to execute that particular judgment. And for me, that's a failure in leadership, right? We are talking about the government itself. We're talking about the security agencies. We're talking about the local district assembly and the uh, uh, RegSec, the, the district uh, uh, assembly itself, to make sure that even at all, if the people are actually going to be moved on, there's supposed to be a certain roadmap. A roadmap to where you're going to take where them. The, where are you going to take them? So for you, it's, a, long, it's, so it's, for F, me, it's a failure, a failure. Of, failure of leadership. Let's, now, my point is... Briefly, really because we want to jump on the line and speak to... Yes, um, yeah. My um, point um, on the issue about... Um, for the reason why I don't want to go into the sentiment of it and, is that we can recycle the issues, right? And the point really is that we've, we don't, if you don't go like Prof said, if you don't actually get to the, 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 the granular level as to exactly the reasons why we're facing this problem, and we try to, one, politicize it, we try to uh, incite people and then tap into their emotions and fears, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years' time, the we'll problem still will still be there. there. And, and, and talk about this about again. It's going around so in circles. So we need to deal with the issues. Mm -hmm. For me, okay. as a people, we have been reactive instead of being proactive. I've so got, I've got that point, Eric. Yeah. And thanks for that insight. Let's jump on the line now, speak with a lawyer and member of the NDC communication team, Abraham Amaliba. Good morning. Welcome to GH Today. Good morning, Carl. Thanks. Uh, let me apologize for shooting for my inability. <laughs> no problem. Apology accepted. Now... Uh, do, do you agree with uh, Mr. Amakuchum from the M MPP's communication team where he says there's been just a systemic failure? There's a failure to deal with this Fulani issue from the ground up. It's a failure of leadership. It's a failure of security. It's a failure of the traditional authorities to get together with these people and deal solidly with this issue. Do you believe so? To some extent, it is a failure of our inability to implement our own laws. That, for me, as a lawyer, I will put it. There are laws regulating how animals are supposed to be kept in this country. There are laws that have demarcated some places as ranches so that the animals do not wander about. And that if the uh, animals wander about, you can arrest them, that the, 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 the city authorities can arrest them, ask the owner to come and pay. If he doesn't, you auction the animals and then they, they sell them away out. But it appears, just as in every other facet of our life, implementation of the law <coughs> or the law is, for me, the challenge. Mr. Maliba, let me take you back to the 2012 elections. Ahead of the elections, um, President Mahama actually promised to deal with the Fulani situation. Um, fast forward till today. This is how far we have come. Do you think that government has dealt with this appropriately, as was promised? Um, I think the challenge has been that we will need to understand that this conflict is a conflict between nomadic headmen and crop farmers over the use of land. I don't like saying Fulanis and uh, farmers, no. Because I know there are Ghanaians who are also cattle owners, but only half the Fulani men taking care of them. So it is about nomadic headmen who are looking for grazing places, looking for grass to feed their cattle, as again crop farmers who are the, the, whose uh, occupation is sedentary. Now, there is also the issue of the ECOWAS protocol. Because these people are coming from um, neighboring countries, there is an ECOWAS protocol that talks about allowing cattle to move freely from one part of the sub-region 
to another country, there's a protocol to that effect that we should allow the cattle to green across boundaries. So you need to play this together so that we don't have a situation where you will be seen being high-handed on another person who comes from a different country, which will lead to reprisal attacks on Ghanaians living in that country too. So I think the time has come for the ECOWAS leaders to sit down again and look at the protocol and see how we can demarcate areas just for grazing and areas for crop farming. Until we do that, our governments have their hands tied by some of these uh, protocols. Mr. Maliba, is this yes. another of the president's failed promises? I'm going to quote page 72 of the NDC 2012 manifesto. It says... NADMO will organize training for at least 2,000 rapid response personnel at the national and regional and district levels and take appropriate steps in conjunction with the National Security Council and the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to address comprehensively and in a sustainable manner the menace posed by alien headsmen, especially the Fulani headsmen, within the framework of the ECOWAS protocol. It has not happened. Has the president failed? But you know, in Agogo, the National Security were there last week to implement a fourth order. Um, apart from Agogo, other parts of the country have planning headsmen, but the division is not as sharp as we, we see in Agogo. Has the president failed the people of Agogo? Fine. So in that respect, I'm happy I narrow it down to that way. Has he failed the people of Agogo, sir? The president has not killed the people of Agogo because the people of Agogo have gone to court, secured the court order, and the security agencies are implementing it. The security agencies are under the president. That's not what the president so promised. He, he, didn't, he promised that they would deal with this at a systemic level <laughs> involving oh, NADMO, the, the security, the Red Sec, all those people. Has that happened? Oh, but the state institutions also include the court. And so when the matter is in court, your hands are tied. When the matter is in court, you and me, we cannot do the same. But has NADBO been trained? Say it again. Have the NADBO personnel been trained? That is, that is outside of the court, isn't it? Oh, that one I will not be able to tell you. I don't work with NADBO. I thank you very uh, much, uh, Ibrahim Mamaliba. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a lawyer and he's on the NDC's communication uh, team. Prof. Barry. Yeah. Uh, exactly, you know, what, what, what you, I, you feel that the, 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 the government has failed the people of the Well, Fulani, I the cannot say that the government has failed, but what I'm are they doing well, though? Pardon, are they doing well? Of course, they are doing well as far as the uh, development of the country is concerned. We're talking about the issue of the headsman. Well, the issue of headsman is a crisis, it's ongoing, it comes every year, it has to get a standing policy f before even the PNDC government came into inception. So that if that standing policy was there and the implementation was in process, the government of NDC today wouldn't have come to disrupt it. But the policy is not so there. What I'm so what i saying, the not policy well. was not there. They're not doing well. well if, They're no, in charge. No, no, they, they, we must get a starting point. If the policy was not there, and then if the policy was there, why that the policy was not being in place for all this period, all the, the herdsmen have been in this country. And then mind you, this country is benefiting from the livestock exercise in the country. Almost every day, we slaughter almost 2,500 heads. So why are, you afraid, why are you afraid to put the responsibility squarely on the shoulders of those who are running the country from, uh, 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 under their party, uh, but they form the government and are running the country? No, no, but what How I'm hard saying, is it for you to say you that say, you have failed? Can you say, can you confine this problem to only the period of the PNDC? We're not doing a history Very lesson good. here, sir. No, no, no. We're dealing well, with please. those who are in power now exactly. and they you have the authority with the to deal no, with issues that we are suffering. Please. And, and there were promises and, that were made, and, and, by and, the way. And, and, so we're looking me, at how far and, and, we've Excuse come. me with my language. Don't try, I, I don't like you to see you as an opportunist. You are grabbing the opportunity just to, I mean, to apportion a blame, particularly <clears throat> associated with the political issues, okay. which I don't want to go there. But what I'm saying now, if Prof, let me just hold policy, you on for a minute. Fine, a minute. Fine. I have back on the line Honorable Anyime Duenchi, MP for Santiago Central. And we're told you want to correct an impression. That Some Prof. submissions right, made um, by Professor Barry. I, I just tuned into your program and I had a professor on the Agogo. And uh, he thought that the statement I made about the, the fact that the cattle must be attacked. It's an irresponsible uh, statement, and I, I want to correct him. I think 
that is the most responsible statement because the problem has existed year after year. I would say, without break, without reservation, that the Fulani Hesmen are very, very callous people. They are very callous. They kill and destroy. They shoot. When the, the reasons, you, they don't need any special reason. When you are using chemicals on your farm, they don't, they know that if the cattle feed the grains on the, on the, um, on the grass that you have used the chemical, the cattle will die. So that is enough reason for him to kill, for the full animation, to kill the person that is doing that. When they get to another farm and there are watermelon, they use their color facing, uh, slashing them, especially around this uh, period, and tell the, uh, order the cattle to feed on that. And if you are a farmer and you get closer, this is enough reason for him to kill you. In person, person there was this guy, Kwajubila. Uh, he lived in the village alone. I saw it with my naked eye. They just cut the throat, the head off. A full army head man just cut the throat. Uh, that one off. All these continue. They have killed between 30 and 40 people within the Agogo environment. Uh, Honorable, let me correct this impression that when it comes to the Fulanis, we were there, I, I, like we mentioned early on. So there are two types, the, the born and bred ones who naturally are now locals of Algo. And the other group that we're told come in and out, you know, every now and then. And so I think that it would be appropriate if we actually kind of, you know, limit, you know, kind of distinguish between the two because then even the locals feel frustrated, you know, by the, 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 the crimes that are, are committed by this group of people, as, as in the other group. So let's not kind of categorize all Fulanese as criminals. I don't know if that makes sense. What we know, what we know at Sabogo is that they were in New Zealand. And then we took some people that are responsible for the security of the citizens to court. And then we got an order that any uh, uh, Fulani headman who is at that place, and any person for that matter, who would go wild and would not put their cattle in a ranch and whatnot, should be sent out of the land. This is all that we know. Because okay. the problem, if I have to start mentioning the problem, we will not finish. Uh, I will not finish before the program ends. It is numerous. So you need to be part of the problem before you actually appreciate what the people of Arubo are going through. Okay. They have, there is an order they should go. Honorable they are not going, we have to do what would make them go. And they are there to protect the cattle, make sure that the cattle are fed well, and then they get some money out of it. Okay. So the moment their cattle is attacked, they would leave the land. And to me, that is the, about the smartest position. Okay, After so we'll leave it here, Honorable. Honorable, we'll leave it here. Many thanks for your time. So. He right. actually sought to correct an impression, mm -hmm. uh, some submissions that you've made. But we, we, we're done now, we're wrapping up. But your final comments, let me give you 30 seconds each. Well, I, I think that, I mean, based on what you guys actually uh, witnessed when you went there, um, it's an issue that needs some kind of immediate uh, re resolution to it. Now, the government should be up and doing to make sure that it doesn't get to a certain point where we can't handle it. But the point is that even if they are moving from Agogo, they are transferring that particular issue and tension to another place. So as far as I'm concerned, my final submission, we need to come out immediately as a matter of urgency with a policy initiative which will modernize the way we farm our cattle. Okay, Prof. Well, that's very words. good. Well, all what I have to say, you know, running up the program that well, <laughs> let us try to get a mechanism and machinery that we can deal with this issue <coughs> in a very more just and balanced way. Mm. Now, it appears, or even all the media that we've been going through and whatnot, sometimes they are biased. 
and you see even people are sending their comments and everything, when they see the comment that is not going well with their taste, they just brought it aside. They don't even like the Ghanaian public to be informed about this, which is very unfortunate. And then again, if you have situation of this nature, now our own, our own honorable uh, uh, you know, person who just spoke that word, he said the Fulanis are callous. And what I don't think any psychology that uh, I've been to and, and the information or the, the knowledge of psychology that I've been trained on that will just describe somebody as being callous and somebody who has always associated with the animal, you know, husbandry and, 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 and livestock uh, uh, issues. Somebody who is, can, can be described as a callous is a person who has not even ha having anything to do with the animal husbandry. If you touch his animal, like we are just touching his own son, so that person cannot be qualified to be described as a callous person. Okay. We'll leave you here. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Professor Barry is the president of the Fulanese in Ghana. Thank you, Prof. And Erika Makuchum is on the MPP communication team.